Hello everyone, this is Tyler with Diesel Laptops. I am here today because I want to show everybody just a little bit of what you can do with Pocket Fleet coupled along with DTC solutions. So we always get a lot of questions, what can it do, what can it not do, so I thought I'd do a little demonstration. So I'm going to open up PF Diagnose and right now we are actually connected to an ECM that's sitting here on my bench. So right now we have um, a Cummins 2004-ish model ECM sitting here. There's not a sensor hooked up to it, so we're going to have a ton of codes that pop up that will allow us to really get a good idea of what we can do with this thing. So very quickly, the overview screen is here. We always want to make sure we have a picture of our correct adapter. Ours is set right now to connect on both J1708 and J1939. We do have to change that occasionally if we're switching over to something with OBD2. But in this case, we're not. We're using our standard 6 and 9 pin connector. So we'll go ahead and hit the connect button and give it a second here. So again, this one's going to come up a little bit odd. So when you're normally hooked up to a truck, you'll actually get the truck vehicle, uh, the VIN number. In our case, there is no truck. It's just sitting here on our bench. So we're not going to pull up an ABS or transmission or anything else of that nature. So as you can see, there, there's two tabs you spend most of your life on inside DTC, inside Pocket Fleet and DTC Solutions. So with this DTC tab stands for Diagnostic Trouble Codes. And right now, we have a ton of codes. And it's going through here and it's telling us, uh, let's just make this a little bit bigger here if we can. And it's telling us on J1708, we're actually getting our OEM flash code, and that's important. And we're also getting our PID and FMI. So you will notice, I, we sell scanners for 300 bucks. A lot of generic tools will, you can buy in the market as well. They'll give you these PID and the FMI, and maybe the count, but they'll very, very rarely give you the flash code. And that's one of the big advantages of Pocket Fleet, because if you go into Google or go anywhere else and try to figure out what PID 94 FMI 4 is, you are not going to be able to figure it out. You need that actual OEM flash code along with knowing that this is a Cummins engine that we're connected to. So as you can see on this vehicle, as I page down here, there are quite a few codes that we have. So I'll just go through the list here real quick while well, we got a second. All right, so now we're off J1708, and now we're on to J1939. So this particular engine that we're, this ECM I should say that we're connected to, it actually has both. It has J1939 and J1708 on it which is why it causes those codes to appear twice. So if I scroll down here to the bottom of the list, we'll also have some inactive codes that we can look at. So there's some inactive ones that are in this ECM as well. So now the question is, well, that's great. We have the code. What do we do to fix it? Uh, and that's really where the, the rubber meets the road with a lot of diagnostic software. Having the code's one thing, but knowing how to fix it is completely something else. So let's take a look here. Uh, we have a code 132, and I know just from what I'm hooked up to, uh, it does give you the engine serial number here as well, but we know that this is a 2004-ish ISX ECM. So I'm going to go down the bottom here, down to DTC Solutions, and show you how this program works. So we go in here, and it says Select ECM, and all we do is we go through the list, and we find where our Cummins engine is. And as I told you, this is a Cummins ISX 2004-ish vintage, so we pick that model. And now we have our list of codes. So it's going to give us the PID, the SPN, and even the FMI. And as we go through the list here, you'll see all of our codes over here on the left. So if we can't remember which code it was, let's just go back into PF Diagnose. And we have our code 132. We'll just take the one right off the top of the list. Code 132, low voltage detected accelerator pedal position signal. So if we go back into DTC Solutions, we go down to code 132, and it's the exact same code. And the great thing about DTC Solutions is this is like a simplified repair. This is going to give you, hey, this is where you need to go to look to fix this. So possible causes, we can scroll down, and it's going to basically tell us what's going on with this or where you need to go to look at it. All right, so we know there's a problem. There's probably an open circuit in the accelerator signal. Maybe it's the accelerator pedal position sensor, something of that nature. Uh, to give you an example of another one, let's go back into DTC Solutions. I'm sorry, back into Pocket Fleet. Let's grab another one here. Let's grab code 2272 for EGR valve position. 
Go back into DTC Solutions. Let's go find code 2272. I think I overshot it. 2272. Exhaust gas EGR valve position circuit. And again, it's going to tell you a little bit about that code. It's going to tell you where to go. And it's going to tell you what you need to do to fix the, to fix the vehicle and get rid of that code. So everyone says, that's great, but I want more information. I, I need more. So that's the beautiful thing about our kit that you purchase. If I'm going to go all the way out to the desktop here, we have a folder called Manuals. I'm going to go ahead and load up Manuals, and I'm going to go over to Cummins, and there's this one called All Cummins Troubleshooting. So those of you that are familiar with Cummins Insight, you know that you can just double click a code, and bam, it pops right up, gives you the information. Well, all that same stuff is in here as well. It's just broken down a little bit different. So this has every single Cummins engine that they make in here with all the repair information that you need. So they're in alphabetical order. We're going to go down to ISX. So I know I have an ISX CM871. I just kind of open up the little plus signs to open up the different categories. Then we're going to go down to diagnostic methods. We're going to go to troubleshoot fault codes. And then here's all of our codes. So as I click on this one, like code 132, here is our breakdown of the wiring diagram, more information on it scroll down and at the very bottom of each of these you can click on the code click on the link and you will get your step-by-step -step repair information for that code so yes this is the exact same troubleshooting guides that dealerships use for Cummins they are loaded on our kit they're available on there very very simple and easy to use once you understand how they work the other tab that you spend a lot of your time on is the monitor tab I can go over here to monitor and this is where it's going to display all your live data. So I'm going to, we're probably not going to pick up a lot since my ECM is sitting here on a bench. But let's just scroll through and see if it picks up anything at all. So it's picking up some of the status indicators. It says attention warning indicator lamp. It's red, which it is. Uh, it's picking up the maximum road speed that this vehicle set for. It's picking up the positions of some of the switches. Uh, over here you will see it is picking up some values and that's basically just going to be the uh, default value there's no sensor hooked up at all uh, so it's pulling up what it thinks that engine sensor is pulling up and again obviously our engine coolant temperature is not 417 degrees so this is where all your live data would be on the vehicle for anything that you want to see on it at all um, there's your engine voltage engine rated horsepower and so on and so on so depending on what type of vehicle that you're hooked up to, you will see a variety of different information loaded in here on it. All right. So real quick, I just wanted, that was the real quick overview of DTC Solutions with Pocket Fleet. And to give you an example of how the codes work, how they display, and how you can do some basic troubleshooting and triage on any type of equipment, whether it's a truck, automobile, generator, earth moving equipment. That's the great thing about Pocket Fleet is it's not just one program. Or one application, it's a universal one. So thank you for watching and have a great day.